I often talk about government schools and the deep state media rewriting history so that the American public doesn't understand where the true power lies. Because if you can identify that power, you will also be able to study and confront it. It's also no secret that history is written by the winners. Armed with that knowledge, I'd like you to examine a moment in history that when written immediately after it happened in the Mockingbird media and for the decades that preceded was a complete fabrication. Lies that would be regurgitated and retold in books and television programs over and over and over again. Lies written by the winners in an unprovoked armed conflict involving the United States and a country in the Middle East. Not Iraq, not Iran, or even Saudi Arabia, but an attack perpetrated by Israel. Unprovoked on an unarmed naval ship in international waters, in an attack that claimed the lives of 34 American citizens and wounded 171. The attack on the USS Liberty on June 8, 1967. The USS Liberty was a naval intelligence ship monitoring the war brewing between Israel and Egypt. Surviving crew members who would be threatened into silence for decades now recall a clear sunny day with anger and confusion. At 10.30 a.m. that morning, an Israeli reconnaissance plane that had made visual contact and circled the vessel earlier in the day, along with several others, beginning around 8 a.m., made visual contact again. The pilot circled so close that crew member Larry Weaver was able to wave and recalls the pilot waving back and smiling. They were slowly lumbering over our ship and we were waving at them, they were waving at us. And I felt that we were, in, we were in great shape because they knew who we were. We had an American flag flying the standard and then we put up the holiday colors, which is a huge American flag. And it was a bright sunny day with the wind blowing, I don't know, five or 10 knots, the flag was unfurled. You could see it for miles. And despite the lies of both the Israelis and the Americans for the decades that followed, we now know that the Israelis had positively identified the USS Liberty as an American vessel. Something that has been confirmed now with recordings of the pilot's communications. The crew felt comfortable in the knowledge that the Israelis were aware of their location in the dangerous region and able to identify them, which is probably why they were so bewildered when on that sunny day they witnessed the inexplicable. The attack was obviously deliberate. I consider it uh, this cold-blooded murder of American sailors that day. Three hours after Larry Weaver would wave at the smiling pilot as sailors sunbathed on the deck of the USS Liberty, Two unmarked Israeli fighters launched missiles directly at them without warning. I saw them come at us. In fact, I was looking through the porthole when the jets came down at, 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 and leveled off on us at attack attitude. To my surprise, uh, there were red flashes under the wings and uh, missiles, rockets started hitting the ship. But that would not be the end of the attack. The Israeli jets began strafing the deck with machine guns as the crew of the Liberty ran for cover. We were under attack. We could hear these shells hitting the ship. The whole ship would ring. It was like you were on the inside of a huge bell and someone beating on it with a sledgehammer. The Liberty immediately attempted to radio for help. But in addition to the damage caused by the assault to their antennas, their radio transmissions had also been jammed you'd have to know what frequencies we were going to come up on. Um, to know that, you'd have to know that we were an American ship. They were jamming both our distress frequencies and our tactical frequencies. The tactical frequencies is all right, but the international distress frequencies is a violation of international law to jam them, and the Israelis were jamming them. This was no mistake. The Israelis knew exactly who they were attacking and declassified documents now show that order came straight from the top. We now know the order came from Mayush Dayan. <clears throat> we have declassified CIA cable exposing his order. After the initial assault, the pilots asked permission to unleash a new weapon on the Liberty.
An order to napalm the defenseless ship was given. Remember, at this time, and ever since, Israel was considered our ally. While the Liberty burned with napalm, two Israeli warboats approached and began discussing with the pilots who would get to finish her off. Several torpedoes were launched. One found its mark, killing 25 American crew members in an instant. The ship was severely disabled, but the crew was trapped. When the Americans attempted to abandon ship, the Israeli Navy opened fire on the lifeboats with 50 caliber machine guns. Three inflatable life rafts that remained seaworthy were dropped over the side and were machine gunned by the motor torpedo boats. With body parts strewn all over the deck and blood streaming down the bulkheads of the wounded Liberty, the Israeli torpedo boats circled its prey, firing armor-piercing projectiles into her hull, resulting in the killing and wounding of nearly two-thirds of the Americans on board. This is part of an armor-piercing shell. The outer portion or jacket makes the hole that this then goes through. And a bullet like this that hit uh, Seaman Francis Brown and, and killed him. He died right on the spot. Just fell to the floor dead. He was just barely 18. During the assault, one of the surviving Marines was able to wire a makeshift antenna and get a May Day message out to a nearby American fleet. My RMs, not knowing any better during the strafing runs, were stringing long wires so that we could get an SOS out. And thanks to them, the ones that survived, we did get an SOS out to the USS America. The Israelis intercepted the message, and fearing the Americans were sending out fighters to respond, called off the attack and summoned the American naval attaché and claimed they had made a terrible mistake. And word must have traveled fast because President Johnson himself personally demanded that the fighters responding to the cries for help coming from the Liberty were to be recalled. Robert McNamara ordered the aircraft recalled. He challenged the order, and Lyndon Johnson came on. He said he didn't give a damn if the ship sunk. He would not embarrass his allies. This was the worst attack on a U.S. naval vessel since World War II, and the response from the Americans was to cover it up. The Mockingbird media barely mentioned the attack, calling it a friendly fire incident. The Johnson administration discussed sinking the Liberty so that it couldn't be photographed. Survivors were threatened. The Navy told the Liberty survivors never to talk about the attack to anyone, including our families. Repercussions for violating these orders to silence could result in your court-martial, imprisonment for violating national security or worse. NSA agents even camped out at their homes to ensure the press blackout. Israel hired journalists to plant pro-Israel stories in the media and threatened to accuse anyone who leaked the story of the Liberty with cries of anti-Semitism and blood libel. The inquiry was shut down, testimony erased, and for decades, those involved in the Johnson administration and the Israelis lied about the incident. Nobody ever asked why Israel would attack an American ship with unmarked jets and jam its communications. They never asked why they went to extreme measures to try to make sure there were no survivors on a ship they knew with certainty belonged to the Americans. Something that only seems to make sense if Israel intended to blame the attack on someone else. Had the Liberty not been able to get its transmission successfully out to the American fleet, would the attack have been blamed on the Egyptians? Had it sunk, I assume when debris washed ashore the next day, it would have blamed, been blamed on Egypt. There were many, many miracles that day. I never myself accepted the Israeli purported explanation. Um, Accidents don't occur through repeated attacks by surface vessels and by aircraft. It obviously was a decision taken 
pretty high up in, on the Israeli side. Would the Americans have been lied into another war to fight on the side of those who attack them? Once again, now that enough time has passed to ensure that nobody will pay for their crimes, the truth finally trickles out and the guilty parties are pleased at the complete absence of a reaction from the American people. Because after all, history is written by the victors. And if there's anything that's as clear as that morning in 1967, it's that liberty never had a chance. The ultimate lesson of the liberty attack was that it had far more effect on policy in Israel than in America. Israel's leaders concluded that nothing they might do would offend the Americans to the point of reprisal. If America's leaders did not have the courage to punish Israel for the blatant murder of American citizens, it seemed clear that their American friends would let them get away with almost anything. My belief system so strong from age five when I can remember standing on the parade ground at attention with not anybody telling me to do that at West Point. I did it because I wanted to do it, because I believed. And then going to the military academy, serving, defending, I said, no, 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 not my government. My government would not tell a lie like that. And uh, I just disbelieved, I was so, ingrained in my belief system that I could not believe. I literally could not believe. Then the torpedo boats began strafing life rafts in the water, an international war crime. While all of this was happening, the oversized American flag flew clearly above the ship. The attack on the Liberty went on for hour after hour after hour. During the entire attack, the USS Liberty continually called the 6th Fleet that was nearby, begging for air support or rescue. Two aircraft carriers in the Med responded by launching fighter aircraft. Unbelievably, they were recalled by the White House. Rear Admiral Geist, then commanding the carriers in the 6th Fleet, called Washington personally to confirm the recall order. Secretary of Defense McNamara came on the line, and then President Johnson himself told Geis, I want that goddamn ship going to the bottom. No help. Recall the wings. Imagine being Admiral Geis, begging the President to allow you to defend an American ship that's under attack, and being told by him that he wants the ship going to the bottom. Despite the fact that the U.S. carriers withdrew their help, a Russian spy ship appeared and witnessed part of the attack. After three hours into the attack, the Israelis withdrew because there were witnesses, allowing the damaged USS Liberty to limp to safety. Forty years after the attack on the USS Liberty, we know exactly what happened. I've interviewed former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Thomas Moore. I've interviewed the admirals that were on the line who heard what President Johnson said. I've even talked to the head JAG officer of the Navy, who was ordered to falsify the reports and cover up what had really happened. One of the Israeli pilots has gone public as well, saying that three times he refused over his radio to headquarters to attack the ship, saying clearly that it was an American ship in international waters and an ally. He was ordered under threat of court-martial to engage the ship. In a nutshell, this is what happened. President Johnson had personal control over the ship, parked it in the Mediterranean, made a backroom deal with Israel to attack it with an order to kill all aboard. Then the attack on the ship was to be blamed on Egypt. The U.S. would enter the war and take over the entire Middle East. In the aftermath of the attack on the most highly decorated ship in U.S. history, the captain and his entire crew were told they would spend life in prison or be killed if they told anyone what happened. Captain William L. McGonagall was given the Congressional Medal of Honor in secret and told not to tell anyone that he had won the award. Brett Favre here with Don't Ever Forget the USS Liberty and the men and women who died on that day.